you prashant um thank you justice shishak for laying out um the program and laying out the issues we are dealing with um and informing us of what really is happening in manipur not since just a few years but since decades um i would just like to add something here before i move on and lay down what we are going to do here um a point which justice shishak made that manipur as a society is terminally ill we need to do something about it um that is something which we felt uh, when we visited manipur um this was 2 years ago together with uh, two other researchers and two senior law students we visited to see first hand to learn first hand what really is conflict what really is uh, how to what really is this terminally ill concept which uh, justice shishak mentioned about and uh, it was quite a profound experience um to see how a society can function even with such archaic laws like aspa uh even as an outsider one feels the force of such laws and such injustices in a society which is in india governed by our constitution liberal constitution that's the dilemma we are dealing with um however as uh, academics researchers the inspiration for this topic um also is drawn from the supreme court of india in its first momentous judgment of 2016 in the efam case where the supreme court itself showed the way that it is the truth we are looking at it is our criminal <coughs> justice system may not be looking for the truth but in societies like manipur it is the truth we are looking at um again as researchers it was quite difficult to see how transitional justice can function in india in manipur um and that is why visiting manipur was a profound experience for us because we could see that the society itself has some mechanisms to heal um we also saw we were there working with the e farm which is an association of widows uh we work very closely with these very strong and powerful women um and just the resoluteness just the resolve to uh, heal the society to keep the injustices which have happened to them also aside in in favor of the society to bring about peace is something which is which is hard to ignore uh, for anyone uh, so that is where the inspiration for this uh, framework came about it also came about from the fact that criminal prosecutions yes very important yes very necessary but may not always be the answer especially in situations where prolonged conflicts have happened and for prolonged periods serious human rights violations have occurred and have been swept under the carpet um therefore transitional justice what is transitional justice this is something which we are also uh, planning to clarify especially how it functions in a country like india which is which has numerous conflicts but undeclared conflicts which has a government which at the international forum needs to speak something else and at the domestic forum uh what it practices it needs to sweep under the carpet so it is it is also grappling with a balance which it needs to uh, always maintain so how do we what is the components of transitional justice which we need to look at prosecutions i we believe that the supreme court the honorable supreme court is doing a momentous job um and in fact it has in itself included transitional justice components surprisingly um why do i say that because first of all the documentation of 1528 cases is part of a transitional justice truth mechanism and that has been done by the association with the help of ngos and that has formed the basis for this case that is one they have taken action upon that is based on the right to know the truth uh the other cases 
where uh, where the Supreme Court has taken cognizance of are cases which have been inquired by the National Human Rights Commission. That again is a component of transitional justice. Uh, again, commissions of inquiries, judicial inquiries. So these are not normal processes. These are some judicial and non-judicial processes which are uh, complementing transitional justice, especially the prosecution part. But now what remains is the victim's part. Prosecution is one thing, and it is quite impossible to have prosecution in each case. That is the limitations of a criminal justice system. However, how can we complement it through other non-judicial processes is something which is a key deliberation for today and which we are grappling with and we are uh, hoping to learn from all of you. Uh, these non-judicial processes are focused on reparations, providing reparations to the victims and their families. Reparations do not just mean compensation. They mean psychosocial support. They mean economic welfare. They mean uh, social benefits. And we need to start conversations around these. And I think the first panel, which will give us a picture of the challenges we are grappling with in Manipur, uh, will inform us how to go about <coughs> that. Um, now, just one final question. Transitional justice is uh, looked at as an international concept. Even the Supreme Court in 2016 judgment has mentioned right to know the truth, but it has not mentioned the word transitional justice. Because academically, uh, the concept is still, you can say, a little vague, but its vagueness comes from, from its flexibility. Uh, it is not purely an international concept. It is something which can be molded to the local needs. For example, in Africa, they have resorted to the Gachacha courts in Rwanda. Uh, they have also incorporated the principle of Ubuntu uh, in laying down the transitional justice mechanisms. Now, in Manipur, when we visited, there are similar processes, unique, uh, very creative, and very powerful processes. The women's organizing themselves is one such process. The concepts of achumba, which basically uh, relates to truth, is a Manipuri concept. The concept of itabo is something which is a Manipuri concept of reconciliation. And I hope our Manipur panel uh, en enlightens us a bit about these local concepts. Um, so with that, um, what we are trying to achieve here is what is the form of transitional justice which may be applicable in Manipur. We are basing uh, this uh, meeting on the IFAM case, of course, but we are not forgetting that the conflict is ongoing. The violations are also ongoing. They might have reduced, but they are ongoing. There are journalists being picked up. There are kidnappings happening. Um, and there is, so we need to also uh, look into the guarantees of non-recurrence and which should uh, form part of the framework which we are discussing. So with this, uh, uh, I hope all of you will pose a lot of questions um, which we are sure to take into account. There is a common sheet in the bag which has been provided to you. Please write your observations, your, con uh, your questions, either to the speakers or something which we should take into account in our study. And please drop that before you leave. It will really benefit us to take in your opinions in our report. Uh, thank you so much. And with this, we will almost immediately start the first panel. Thank you.